Hello, Ninja Trader Vendor. My name is Juanita, and I am one of the partner liaisons here on the Ninja Trader ecosystem. And today I will be going over the Ninja Trader 8 vendor licensing. If everyone is ready, let's go ahead and get started with using vendor licensing in Ninja Trader 8. With Ninja Trader 8, vendor licensing now includes add ons, bar type, chart style, drawing tools, import type, indicator, market analyzer column, optimization fitness, optimizer, performance metrics, share service, strategy, and the Superdome column. These are quite a few options that you are now welcome to protect, license, and distribute to your users. Ultimately, this will give you a lot more freedom for what you can develop for your users from within the NinjaTrader 8 platform. And to the right here, you will see I have included a table, which just gives um, you know a ninja script type as well as the description of that type. So listed, we do have add-ons, bar type, chart style, drawing tools, import type, indicator, market analyzer column, optimization fitness, and optimizer. For any of you with questions of what these are and you need a brief description, please feel free to read this. This is also included in a PDF for our vendor licensing, which is included in the link below this video for additional questions. One thing to know about the Ninja Trader 8 um, is you will need to com be converting your Ninja script from Ninja Trader 7 to Ninja Trader 8, of course. To accomplish the goals of providing expanded support, consistency, performance, and improved functionality, it was necessary to include some code breaking changes. This means that existing scripts for NinjaTrader 7 will have to go through a porting process to the get the code compiled and working in NinjaTrader 8. The changes required are typically mild and primarily constitute renaming methods and moving code to new state form. We have compiled an overview guide of the new concepts in NinjaTrader and a list of code breaking changes to help you get started. If you do run into issues with porting a script, please post in our beta forum so that we can insist in improved documentation where needed and to provide constructive feedback on these documents. The next important thing um, you know, to go over for vendor NinjaTrader 8 vendor licensing is how you will obtain vendor licensing from within NinjaTrader 8. Vendor licensing is now handled via a NinjaScript add-on in the same process as you would install a custom indicator or strategy. In the link below, I will have included a download link for the vendor licensing zip file. You will, once you have completed the process of installing the NinjaTrader 8 vendor licensing zip file, you will need to ensure that you have restarted NinjaTrader for this install to complete. So once you select vendor licensing zip file, you'll notice that this window pops up here. You're going to go ahead and save the file and select OK. From there, you will need to open NinjaTrader 8. You'll notice here that vendor licensing is listed. However, if you do select on that, you will not be quite ready to use it. You'll still have to complete the import. So you're going to select Tools, Import, NinjaScript. Once you select this, a new window will pop up, and if you have saved it to your desktop, the vendor licensing zip file will appear here on your desktop. If not, you can select this box here with the up arrow, which does take you back a couple um, back to the to the file source of where it could be saved if it's in your download file. If you saved it somewhere else in particular, this is how you'll get back to those files. As I said previously, after the install has completed, you will need to restart NinjaTrader. Once you restart NinjaTrader, you can select Tools, Vendor Licensing, and this will open a new window, which does look primarily similar to the NinjaTrader 7 vendor licensing. You'll see you'll still be able to put the name and key here, which we'll go ahead and review in this next slide coming up. Okay, so I would like to give a little demonstration of using the vendor licensing tool from within the NinjaTrader 8. You'll see here that we do have the NinjaTrader 8 Control Center open. To get to the NinjaTrader vendor licensing, as you've seen on our previous screen, you'll go ahead and select Tools, Vendor Licensing. This will go ahead and open a new window. It is pretty similar into Ninja 
pretty similar to Ninja Trader 7 in the fact that you will be able to enter the name of the key as well as the key here. You'll select Authorize. It'll show you how many products there are. To see these products, you're going to go ahead and select Show down here. And we'll expand this just a little bit. And you'll be able to go ahead and see um, all the products that are listed here. So example, if we've seen John Smith and he was working with us and we wanted to make some changes, we would just go ahead and select his name and that will highlight the whole row for him. You can select Edit. This is where you'll be able to make any changes for the product type the start date, the end date, so let's say we wanted to go ahead and extend this out, um, get it started today, and then extend it out for the week. Once you do that, you'll just go ahead and select OK, and that will complete the changes. From within the Ninja Trader 8 vendor licensing, you can also add new licenses, so you'll select Add. You'll see here that you can enter the name, machine ID, the product type, the start date as well as the end date of this license. Select OK and this will go ahead and create you your next license. OK and so another thing to note using the vendor licensing is that you are now able to search by name or specific machine ID. So let's go ahead and for example take John Smith. You'll go ahead and select show and it'll pull up any vendor licensings that do are that are listed under John Smith. Also, you'll see here on the bottom that we do have the tab for products. If you select products, you will be able to um, go ahead and see all the products that are listed to the assigned name. You'll think of products as similar to modules from what you've seen in Ninja Trader 7. It should be noted that you can go ahead and make any of the changes that you did from Ninja Trader 7 to Ninja Tr from within Ninja Trader 8. This is a great area for troubleshooting. Um, we have gone ahead and used this currently with our team and we're finding great success with it. Another thing to note is you are able to see messages here. If you wanted to create a custom message, you can go ahead and insert that here. So let's say you prefer your user um, when they're getting an invalid license error to contact you. You can um, submit, please contact Ninja Trader support. And of course you could put, um, you know, your, your company name. So if you prefer to leave these messages as are, you'll go ahead and just remove the messages from there. You can also add, edit, and remove products from within here. Okay, and the next aspect that I would like to discuss today is assigning user-defined IDs. There are two available methods when assigning a user-defined ID. What this is, this is for um, when you are issuing your vendor licensing to your part particular client. They'll need to have the user ID so the product is issued to them. To find this user ID, there are two different methods. Um, you can go ahead and use the machine ID that is stored as is. To locate this, you'll need to select from within the control center, Help, About, and you'll see the machine ID is the fifth option down. You're going to want to go ahead and copy this machine ID by highlighting, right-clicking, and copying. And the client can go ahead and um, email you this machine ID and you can use this on your back end to add it um, to the product that they are being assigned for your vendor licensing. The second method is to store a unique machine ID and the reason that we would do this is if um, oftentimes some clients can have the same machine ID if they have a similar machine or PC. Um, each PC should have their own unique ID however if the components are the same in one computer as another computer, there is a strong possibility that the same machine ID can be used. So in order to assign a unique machine ID, once again you'll have them take the machine ID that was provided. You're going to want to select help from within the control center, third party licensing, What's really important in this step is that they will need your vendor name, so you'll need to provide that to them for this demo. I've included um, our Ninja Trader demo vendor name. 
and then the user defined ID what you'll want to go ahead and put here is the person's name so let's say it's Johnny B you'll go ahead and select submit and you'll see here now that what has changed from the user ID that is under the help about section is that it has added this additional slash Johnny B here to make it a unique machine ID so you'll, what you'll want to do is go ahead and have the client copy this machine ID and send it over to you. Okay, and once you have received the unique machine ID from the client in an email, from here what you'll go ahead and do is select tools from within the Ninja Trader Control, Control Center, vendor licensing, and you'll see here that you will have your, your name and the excuse me, your vendor name exactly as you have provided it to the customer, and then the license key that you have entered in. You're going to want to go ahead and authorize that. What you'll see here is that it does show there are 10 products are assigned to this vendor. We'll select show, and then to go ahead and add the new, um, the new client's name, you'll select add, and here is where you'll put the client's name. So Johnny B is what we used for his unique ID. You'll enter the unique machine ID that he provided you. You're going to go ahead and select the product. For this, we'll select the MACD cross. You'll make this a regular. You could make it a free trial if you were doing a trial, but most of the time you'll keep it as regular. You're going to want to go ahead and create a start date and an expiration date. So in this case, if you just select today, it'll auto populate. Um, the date for today and then depending on the how long you'd like this expiration to be I know some vendor licensing providers do extend it out for a year others do a few months for our demo purposes we'll go ahead and set it for March 31st then you'll select OK and now you'll see here that the that Johnny B has been added to the product list. To make any changes, you would just go ahead and select Edit, and you can make any changes to this license key. If you did want to remove it, you'll see you have the option to remove it down here as well. It is important to note that with creating the machine IDs for each customer, each client um, for their unique product, their your indicator or strategy that you are um, assigning to them, it is important to know that you do provide explicit ex instructions for completing this. If you do need any help with this, please feel free to contact us at info at ninjatraderecosystem.com. The next feature I want to demonstrate is adding license verification to your source code. Before exporting your custom indicator or strategy, you will need to make sure to add this line of code to ensure your Ninja Trader add-on checks our licensing servers for an active license of the product prior to allowing the client to fully use it. The line will go in the initialize section of the strategy or indicator that you are working on. What you will see on this current slide is the license verification that would be added to your source to your code. Um, so it this is exactly what you'll see and it does have a little bit of a breakdown here for each item with a description the vendor name is the unique name that is provided by Ninja Trader for the licensing of your products the module is going to be the product name so this will allow you to define different licenses for your pr different products and the vendor URL will be the URL that is displayed for any user notification pop-up window the vendor mail is the email address that is displayed in any user notification pop-up window. And then the do verify is the function that returns a bool. If false, the script will not verify. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and review an example of adding the verification to the source code. To begin this, what you'll need to select is from within the Ninja Trader 8 Control Center, please select New. Ninja Script Editor, and for the demonstration of this, I did add my um, li license demo to indicators. So I'm going to go ahead and just open that up. One moment. Okay, and so you'll notice this line here, um, which is similar to what was just showing on the previous slide. The vendor license um, code is where you're going to enter your vendor name. So for the purpose of this video, the vendor license name is Ninja Trader Demo. My product name will be the product name that I, um, you know, 
created for the module. So it's product name and module are going to be the same. Um, so for this purpose, let's just go ahead and create Mac D. And the URL will be the URL um, where your customers will be directed for your product. So for this, we'll put www.ninjatraderdemo.com. And the address um, will be Juanita.archuleta at Ninja Trader Eco ecosystem.com and this will be the address um, where if there is an error a window will pop up letting the client know to please contact Juanita.archuleta at ninjatrader.com for additional assistance with covering this error. So this is how you'll add your, so your verification to your source code. Um, for, a for additional information on this please refer to our help guide. The next thing I would like to go over is DLL protection with Agile.net. For those of you that distribute NinjaScript, we upgraded our protection to use the latest version, excuse me, the, lati the latest Agile.net 6.3 protection. As the protection is stronger, the service is no longer completely free, but we have negotiated a significantly discounted price of only $100 for protecting NinjaScript as assemblies. Please visit the protection slash DLL security section of the Ninja Trader help guide, which um, in the bottom of the screen, it will include our help guide for vendor licensing. You will need to make sure that when you are getting the Ninja Script, um, the Ninja Script protection, which is agile.net, that you are from the export screen selecting protect compiled assembly. This is very important. Uh, and so if you have any questions with that, please let us know. Now that you have installed vendor licensing, you can begin adding NinjaTrader 8 users to your custom scripts. For detailed instructions on how to use machine IDs and add new products, please download the NinjaTrader 8 vendor licensing help guide. And this will also be included this will also be included in the video description below the Ninja Trader 8 Vendor Licensing Help Guide. I would like to thank everyone for their time today. We have reached the end of our video. I would like to offer you some resources in the description video once again just to let you guys know. It will include the Vendor Licensing Help Guide as well as the Security and Protection PDF file. Please feel free to reach out to your NinjaTrader ecosystem partner liaison at, at info at ninjatraderecosystem.com for additional questions on this. Thank you for your time today and have a great day.